the conformity cult. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, liberals claim to cherish diversity. They pretend to hold it sacrosanct. They worship at its altar. Newsroom diversity, you know, is so important. Our leaders and the way they lead a newsroom that backs facts, reporting, and diversity. Give me time and on camera. So predictable, racial, ethnic, gender diversity is what they're all talking about. But really, that's a lie as well. What they're really protecting is groupthink. Because, let's face it, if you're black and conservative, like Justice Thomas or someone like Ben Carson, then they don't think you count. You're a traitor, in fact, to your race. Ditto if you're Hispanic and support Trump. But what about ideological diversity? Doesn't it help us sharpen our own thinking? Isn't debate good? Almost a decade ago, a Morning Joe host saw the dangers of a media cocoon forming. When we talk about diversity, and I think that's really important in news divisions, we should also talk about cultural and ideological diversity. We should be out finding people who disagree with the overwhelming majority of opinions in newsrooms. Of course, he's right, but they'd toss Willie out on his ear if he repeated those lines now. Now, a lot has changed in almost a decade. The network where I actually started my TV career wouldn't ever hire anyone like me now. Oh, you've ever supported Trump? You support him now? Forget about it. Now, somehow, Ronna McDaniel slipped through at NBC until the inmates took over the asylum. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation. Our democracy is in danger because of the lies that people like Ronna McDaniel have pushed on this country. I find the decision to put her on the payroll ex inexplicable, and I, and I hope they will reverse their decision. And the peacocks in the suits did just that. They canned McDaniel. It's the shortest tenure in TV history, I think. But why? Well, because she supports Donald Trump, period. And because she didn't denounce him after the election or after January 6th. Believe no other explanation they provide about why they got rid of her. She's not a random pundit. This is a former chairwoman of the RNC. Now, believe it or not, this is great news, not for Ron, of course, but certainly for the election. The truth is, these people have so little faith in Biden's record or the power of their own ideas that their only response is to silence and defame. They certainly can't risk anyone watching NBC and being persuaded by Ron or anyone like her. Forget the fact that at least half of the voting public, potential viewers as well, agree with her. Now, this isn't the news business. This is simply an extension of the DNC. I felt very strongly about it. I know you felt very strongly about it. I think everyone from 4 o'clock on, from Nicole all the way to midnight, we all felt very strongly and said so on our respective shows uh, yesterday. None of these people care about true diversity. What they really celebrate is conformity across the board. There's no room for dissent, period. To see the essentially unanimous feeling among all the journalists in this building That's and all it. the sort of senior staff and all the producers and everybody in this building about this was one thing. But then to see the executives and the leadership hear that and respond to it and be willing to change course based on it, based on their respect for us and hearing what we argued, I, I have deep respect for that. Are they really writing their own obituary, though, as to what they claim to be? Again, a news organization. Who knows? But why would anyone, anyone outside of the far-left Democrat bubble ever watch that network? Why would you want anyone on that network to moderate a debate, not with Trump anywhere near the nomination? And CNN empathized with NBC execs and issued a warning. So NBC hoping to sweep this under the rug and move on. Uh, the problem for them is they're now facing, facing a fresh crisis uh, where they're being criticized uh, by the right. So you saw Donald Trump come out and basically uh, characterize them as intolerant, woke leftists. You're seeing that uh, among the Fox News crowd. And so now NBC News is going to have to deal uh, with attacks from the right uh, as it tries to emerge from this crisis. I like him in black. That suits him. 
I mean, of course, Trump is correct. The only Republicans that these people will associate themselves with are former Republicans, Trump haters, people like Nicole Wallace, Michael Steele, or little-known figures hired by the Trump White House who then transform themselves into never-Trump crusaders. Now, these people aren't conservatives. They're simply opportunists. Behold the genius. The problem with Ronna McDaniel is her career was built around supporting Trump. She did engage in some incredibly anti-democratic and un-American, I would argue, behavior. And now you don't know who she's beholden to. Did she ever, I don't know, read that book? I guess maybe she got that from Never Trump for Dummies. Hmm. Look, Democrats and the corporate media have gotten themselves into a huge mess here. They're in their bunkers. They're refusing to change their minds on issues or even they don't even want to be in the same room with someone with whom they have disagreements. Now, what's funny about this is they accuse Trump of this very thing. It's the usual projection that they engage in. They said that he demanded complete loyalty. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. The ugly truth is the price one has to pay to be in their club, the media or in national politics on the left, is total and complete loyalty. Instead of treating RFK Jr. with respect, maybe trying to understand his following, why he has some popularity, they set up a special war room to attack him. Let the freak out begin. Third parties, they're like cockroaches in the kitchen. Okay, it's not what they carry off that upsets you. It's what they fall into and foul up. Okay, Bobby Kennedy could fall into every swing state and foul it up for, for Joe Biden. This is the one of the biggest threats um, to Joe Biden being reelected. I do worry that Bobby just taking some percentage of votes from Biden could shift the election and lead to Trump's election. Democrats have given up on trying to persuade voters through debate and policy success. That was the old way of politics. Now it's just a constant campaign of control, propaganda, and suppression. Biden's not leading a political movement. No way. It's just a cult of conformity. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.